flexible in that respect. So while the option is there for somebody to play the doctor or a doctor or the Corsair or, you know, whatever. Jack um, Harkness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to do that. So don't feel pressured to, like... Sweet. If you're interested, great. If you're not, that's fine, too. Um, basically, if, if, if somebody wants to play the Doctor, they just have to understand that, like, just by virtue of the narrative and the mechanics, they're going to be a little better at Everything. most things than the <laughs> companions are. Mm -hmm. be higher focus. Like, mechanically speaking, yeah, they'll be have, have like... Higher focus is on obviously technology and ingenuity and stuff like that. They watch well, man in the story. Too. Yeah, and in the story too. But the, the the notion is that that person will have to be very. Um, they'll just have to understand that, like, as with any other RPG, if they're playing a captain or a leader or something like that, they have to know when narratively to like see attention. You know what I mean? Like to say, mm -hmm. okay. This is not my... Th you are good at this, and you are good at this, you're good at this. We're going to focus on you now, and you and you, or all of us together, or like... So that it doesn't become, you know... The Doctor Show. Yeah, the do it doesn't become Doctor Who and some other people. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they get kind of narrative control of the spotlight a little bit. Right. That's what happens when any character really gets enough power. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not un unusual or... It's not. It's not. It's not particular to this game system. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, that's somebody who's like maybe. Plus, you always have those power role players. Yeah, a level two higher than you, or or, or, or power gamers who just like want to do just better. the best thing. Yeah, yeah, better in this one small way. So this this is by contrast to that. You have to kind of put yourself into a mindset of like, the point is not to win with numbers. The point is to use the numbers to figure out what interesting thing happens next, right? So it has a very different philosophy than, like, you know, D&D &D has had for, for decades, right? Or Pathfinder has, for instance. Those are very much, like, objective-oriented, like, defeat, defeat the, the monsters win with, with the numbers <laughs> and just, you know, like, be the winner, right? So. Yeah, the this is, like, thing. play the story. Yeah, this is, like, yeah. let's see what happens... And let's make dramatic and interesting things happen in the style of like uh, Powered by the Apocalypse game or something like that, where you're just trying to see where the story's going to go and like have fun with it, right? It's not really about winning per se. It's kind of like playing Life is Strange. Yeah. Second game came out. I have to finish the first game. I keep getting bored. That's fair. It's not the it's, game's fault. Yeah, it's got like real sharp highs and lows in terms of like when it's like grabbing you by the collars and screaming in your face to pay attention and then it kind of like leaves you in the corner to recover and sometimes you're like alright I'm just going to go do something else and yeah I got to uh, the to first it. big oh the bombshell the, the opening of a door was it <laughs> it was the first time like I think it was I don't know if it was the end of the episode or not there on the train and Things go badly. And <laughs> Remember that part of the story where things go badly? <laughs> which, like, which one? At least three times an episode. <laughs> yeah. I finished that. It was the end of episode one is where I... Oh, okay. Okay, I know where you're at. It was like, I, I, I can continue to play. I just... I'm gonna take okay. a break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem is I'll take a break for long enough that I'll forget what the fuck happens. Oh. Yep. That's me in every RPG <laughs> from Bethesda ever. I have never completed one of those games. I beat Fallout New Vegas. I never completed Fallout 3. I haven't completed Fallout 4. Like, Did I... you play the DLC for New Vegas? Yes. That was the best part. So I, the think, best I think I've I did most played. of that. I remember doing Dead Hearts and... No, Dead Money and... Lonesome Road? Yeah. I remember doing, like, several of those. I don't know if I completed all of them, but, like... No, I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. Like, I played a little bit of Oblivion, but I didn't care for it at the time. And then I played, you know, like... I have started Skyrim, like, 4,000 times. I never actually found the... Accurate. I, I'm always a single project person. Yeah. Go to one, then go to the next. Well, I, I try to do that as well, but, like, there are points where I'm just like... I can't. I just drift yeah. off into the ether, like, I can't 
do I think the same you've gotten pretty close on Fallout 4. No, I have. I, I, yeah. I could conceivably load the save and, and start well, again. I, I, I at least don't start a new project until Lost Ones are finished. That's I'll do that as long as it's like, oh, you can finish this in like 8 to 12 hours. But like you look at Oblivion, and I've started that game like upwards of 50 times and played the first hour and a half. And then, like, oh, I don't like this character. I'm going to start it. Yeah, I'm not. And I don't like this character. I've heard Patrick Stewart say this several times by now. I just <laughs> want to move on. You find yourself on a wagon. And I, I keep running into the same problem of I should make a save before I leave the sewers, so I can just like run through characters there. Yeah. And I never do. Hmm. I don't know why. I'm currently 28 hours into my current Fallout 4 save, but I found I enjoyed it a lot more because I'm playing like mod quests instead of the main quest line. I mean, I've just completely ignored the main quest line. And I went into Nuka World for a while, and... <laughs> I, I've enjoyed it more ignoring the main quest line because I hated the main quest line because it was awful. Jason has um, saved on purpose so he can kill that lady <laughs> in Sanctuary and then reboot it again. You know the one. Feels good, huh? Yep. I don't remember her name right now. But Mar- Marcy, Macy, something, something like that, yeah. God, she's so, she's so annoying. Like I can't. <laughs> contextually, I understand. Mm-hmm. Emotionally, psychologically, I understand. But she has continued to be a raging bitch the entire time, <laughs> despite like me doing everything to help Sanctuary and these people, and like, like so I could I could deliver her like the the newly reborn Christ child. <laughs> and she'd be like, don't talk to me. Uh, you know. Like, fuck you, <laughs> I just avoided Sanctuary. I did not want to do settlement building at all because I didn't like that part of the game because I just don't like settlement building. See, I wouldn't have had a problem with it with one major revision to what they did. Don't make me build every goddamn wall. Let me just go. There's a house. There's a house. There's a house. Yeah, quick building houses would be good. Yeah. And, mod- and see, modders fixed that. Modders won't be able to do all the fixes in Fallout 76 that they do for literally every the Bethesda game ever. Mm-hmm. They, well, don't worry. Modders will eventually crack it open. They'll have custom servers running. Like, That's what I'm waiting get for. There, but, yeah, it, it won't be ready for that out of the box. Okay, so the front of the sheet, I, I, I didn't like the look of... I had to make some slight changes to the front of this sheet. Otherwise, it looks pretty much like the other Doctor Who Adventures in Time and Space like role-playing game sheets, right? So the front has got um, your attributes, right? Uh, skills. There's one that's empty, you'll notice. Mm-hmm. Uh, just under transport. Now, normally they have a skill in there called craft, right? Mm-hmm. Which is anything sort of craft-related. Not parts-related, but craft-related. Right. So like... You know, sc- sculpting would technically count in there because it's it's like using your hand, your manual dexterity and your effort to create something, right? The point is that by putting that there, uh, craft becomes this sort of weird catch-all skill, especially if you want to do like, say you want your character to be really good at gambling, mm-hmm. and there isn't really a skill that qualifies that if you just put craft in there. That makes sense. Like, knowledge is too broad. Convince is not that. Mm. <laughs> Athletics is not that. You know what I mean? So so we're playing with like some, some very slight house roll tweaks that you won't notice are different from the, from the actual game. But um, basically, that blank is for whatever you want to put in there. It's basically uh, a slot that enables you, your character, to have some particular kind of unique skill that, you know, that they're good at that isn't, you know, um, covered by the other skills, right? Which could include uh, painting, uh, drawing, sculpting, gambling, uh, sailing. Uh, well, sailing is taken under transport, but, like, you, you get the idea. Something that's not covered by the rest of these skills, but you want your character to be good at, you can just just jot that down into, into the blank and then put skill points in it, and there you go. Now, obviously, that runs the risk of, you know, I, I would I would consider that more for like, for character concept stuff and flavor purposes because you may end up 
in a uh, a situation where that that skill has no application, right? You know, I'm really good at painting, but here we are on a desert planet that doesn't make paint. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? But these flowers, but craft had that same issue as well. You see what I'm saying? So what we're doing is exchanging a fixed skill for an open skill that makes you feel like you're, you know, you're building a more unique character as opposed to like just putting numbers into things. Okay. Okay. Now you'll notice that um, the attributes they've got a um, a hexagon right next to the next to the the labels of mm-hmm. the attributes, awareness, mm-hmm. coordination, and so on. That's where you're going to put your normal number for that. Okay? Which is, if you're a human being, between one and six. Right? Mm -hmm. And these dots in a row next to those are where you're going to, like, bubble in or check off the levels of that attribute that you currently have. Because, for instance, when you take damage in this game, they're getting subtracted from attributes... So your left hand is what you should be at, and your right hand with the dots is like what I'm at right now. And naturally, if you take damage in uh, uh, resolve or strength, your future checks involving strength or resolve are not going to be as good because you need to to take a rest or to have somebody heal you or, or whatever. Yeah. Now, if... I, um, Robert, you were there for our Rocket Age game, you remember? Um, is that what this is based on? This is Rocket Age is based on the Vortex system, and this is also based on the Vortex system, so you may find things that are familiar, especially the story point stuff, which I'll get to in a minute. Yeah. It works kind of the same. I remember the subtracting off the attributes. Yeah. Well, I couldn't remember what Rocket Age didn't have that, but yeah. Uh, mutant. That mutant game we did. Have mutant Year that. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. But that 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 uh, mechanic here is part of their adaptation of the Vortex system. It's definitely based on the same thing that powers Rocket Age. Um, but you can see that skills has just hexagons. They're just flat numbers, right? Oh no. It's launching. Don't do that. So, uh, the basic notion of the game You can just flip this page to the back, and you'll see a pretty handy uh, summary of of what to do in the game, generally speaking. You'll take the number that your attribute is, which again, for a human being, is between 1 and 6. And then the skill rating that you have, which at character creation and so forth, this session will be somewhere between 0 and 5, right? Okay. Uh, then, if a trait applies, which is like, you know, um, for instance, you could be charming, which will give plus two to roles in which you're trying to charm your way through an encounter, right? If a, tra- if a trait applies, then you add that to the total as well. Then you roll two six sided dice, okay? Add that. Oh, that's great. Damn. Twelve. <laughs> two sixes. Um, add all those numbers together, and you get a result. Now we compare that result with the difficulty, which is based on, um, sometimes it's based on other people's, like NPCs or enemies' roles, and sometimes it's just a flat difficulty number that I'm setting. And based on the difference between the result and the difficulty number, we interpret what happens. So we just need 2d6 for this game. 2d6, yes. And you can see that in the level of success, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to match or beat the difficulty. If you're 0 to 3 above, that's a success, which means yes, but, right? Things didn't go as planned. You technically still did the thing, but there's some added complication, right? 4 to 8 is you, the thing happens as you wanted it, right? And then 9 and above is yes, and some extra thing happens, which is usually I'm going to prompt you. Like, what other benefit do you want to happen that's... Like contextually reasonable in the scene, right? Um, then, of course, there are the those sort of the degradations of that: no, but, no, and no, and, right? Uh, failure, bad, and disastrous, respectively. Now, you can see it also affects the damage as well. Like, if you roll to punch a guy, 
uh, and you get a fantastic result, you're doing 1.5 times the damage. Nice little boost. Um, if you only do a success, you barely sort of make it. That's half the damage, right? And all of your uh, weapons will have like two slash four slash six or some variant thereof, right? Which tells you success, good, fantastic, right? So you don't have to do like, the quick you know, math. you don't have to do the quick math unless you really want to. It's just like you just look at the thing and go, ah, okay, I'm only doing two damage for this. And again, that damage, whether it's you're doing it to NPCs and enemies or you're taking it yourself, is subtracted from the relevant attribute. Which could be, in some cases, over two or three attributes, right? You know? Like, if you're being shocked with... If you're being, like, psychologically tortured... or so, Like, if, imagine you're doing the... Uh, Solid Snake gets captured in, in Metal Gear Solid. He's strapped to the weird Mash metal table. to not give Yeah, him. and they're, and he's being both physically and psychologically tortured, right? You, If you take damage that way, you could take it from resolve. You might take it from strength as well. And maybe coordination, you know? M- you know, maybe you're... Your mirrors are getting a little Yeah, shook. right. So, you know, I like systems like this because if you can think of a thing, you can try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, generally speaking, that's... And, and again, these are... These skills are not... Are decoupled from attributes, so mm-hmm. like... I mean, generally speaking, there will be things that like... You probably shouldn't be athletic with no strength. Though. Regularly makes sense. Like, if you're arguing with somebody, you're using your resolve and adding your convince skill. That makes mm-hmm. sense, right? Cool, cool. If you're intimidating somebody, you could potentially do like strength and convince. Yes. Or presence and convince if you're more intimidating through just sheer sure. force of personality rather than your raw. Let, beef. let me show you how I just crushed this can with a bicep. Yes. And so if you're like if you're trying to manipulate someone, you could do like presence and setterfuge or Yeah, for instance. Cool. And so we just as a group sort of, you know, um, I, I will suggest some things, and then we'll settle on what feels right in the moment. And, and again, there are some instances where, like, the, the the combination of attribute and skill is already, like, kind of prefigured. It already makes sense. Mm-hmm. Seducing is presence and convince. Uh, resisted by resolve and ingenuity, which is your, like, your mental faculty, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, Punching is strength with fighting. That makes sense, right? Shooting someone coordination with marksmen, right? Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. So. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, again, on, on the back, you've got your basic rule, you've got the levels of success, plus you've got what you can use story points for. Now, um, you'll start the game with a certain number of story points. You'll put your maximum value in the top right corner of the front page, right? Mm-hmm. There's a story points there. And then, you don't have to keep like erasing that number or like refiguring it because that's think of that as your refresh value right okay. because I will give you poker chips to use as story points and you'll just cash them in right um, and that list on the back gives you examples of what you can use story points for uh, clues or some kind of event that nudges you in the right direction adding extra dice before you roll right um, bumping your level of success or failure up by one for each SP spent. Now notice that if you're trying to turn a failure into a positive result, you can only get to success. Yes, but. But you could turn a success into a good result, or into a fantastic result, depending on how, how many story points you want to spend. Okay. That makes sense? Uh, you can restore half of your attribute levels rounded up that have been lost due to injury or losing a conflict by taking a breather, or having a cup of tea, or whatever it is, right? <laughs> so if you took, like, three levels of damage to your coordination attribute, right, you've been severely dizzied or harried, your, your nerves are shot or whatever, and you decide to have a nice cup of tea, um, and you spend a story point for that, you could then get back... Uh, half of the loss? Half, half of the loss, Rounded. right? Yeah, uh, a rounded uh, up. Okay. So you'd get two back. That makes sense? Okay. Three divided in half, so 0.5. Uh, and it affects every attribute or just all the levels of um all, all the levels of attributes that you've lost, right? So total, right? 
So if you've lost multiple levels across all attributes, you could say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit in this room for like five minutes and let the the technician kind of look me over, or like you know, I'm gonna go into a therapist's office and do like this, and then you can narratively justify how that you know heals you up, right? Uh, let's see. You can have somebody instruct you how to use something. Uh, maybe you don't have a skill. For a single scene, you can spend a story point and you can roll your attribute and the skill rating of the person who instructed you to do it um, and possibly succeed in the task without the person's like direct help. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Somebody's in the other room and shouting over to you, it's the pull the controls friend. and turn the dial. Huh? It's the phone and the friend. In a way, yeah. Who are you going to call? I'm going to call my dad. Dad, I don't need your help. I just want you to know I'm coming home with a million dollars. Yeah. I remember that episode. There is a means of constructing, like, gadgets and stuff on the fly in the game, as is common uh, in Doctor Who, like creating the, the, the thing that goes ding or what have you. Um, it, uh, you can spend story points to create certain levels of gadgets, right? You might spend one story point to create a simple gadget that does one, like, minor thing. You might spend two story points to create a gadget that does one major thing or two minor things. But they might necessarily have to have a bad trait, like only works in space or can only communicate rather than... can only receive rather than transmit. Or so story like points are basically the destiny points in fantasy. Except you have personal pools. Yeah, functionally... It's mm -hmm. what yeah. you use to edit the game and so like, cool, cool. Yeah. Same end effect, but... Stories. You can make a minor change to the plot or story for your temporary advantage. That's just a quick, like, I'm going to throw a story point out. Ah. But what if I had these players? <laughs> um, you can donate some of your story points to another character if you kind of, if you do a speech or, you know, slap on the ass or whatever. Do a quick, like, Get out there, even a coach. Got this, yeah. yeah, huh? Even a kiss. It says yes. Even that, um, and that you basically you're basically spending your story points for them to use, right? So they get story points, um, or you can do something impossible or remarkable, and there is a because it is Doctor Who, mm -hmm. and there is a whole like like there's a chart of like, do you, okay, do you want to do? This ridiculous thing. This is how many story points you should probably spend, right? Um, if I can find it, I'll. Uh, so everybody donate all their story points to one person, and mm -hmm. we just immediately do. solve the problem. Yes, yes and then you've completely problem. misunderstood yep. the game, yep. exactly. and everything's wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then I can go take a nap, and you guys can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's a good to sleep as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've shown in two months. Oh. So I bet those tasted extra good. Especially with the coffee. Oof. I'm glad you, you, you like the cookies. I, I, I attempt to bake away my anxiety a lot of the time. Hence why they're cookies and I just finished banana bread and scones right now. And that's, that's why I'm fat. <laughs> also, you request things. Sure. You I mean, asked for the cookies. You can deny me. But, but then you're being... sad and I don't like it when you're sad. Yeah. Apparently, Unless being Doctor Who, you have to have scones. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought of that. In order to be thin, you have to be sad. That's not true at all. Eh? That that's all that's that. definitely <laughs> true. <laughs> you're you're, sad you're, or you're have a high metabolism. You're speaking from the privilege of your high metabolism, mm -hmm. which mine died several years ago. I used to be 230 pounds. This is not privilege from my high metabolism. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, then you're favored by God, then. <laughs> In one spot. I'll take it. You fat... You take what you can get. Yep. And pull up the... Uh, just to give you a notion of, like, if you wanted to do something ridiculous, like... Well, we are going to have to do things that are ridiculous. Because this is Doctor Who. I mean, like, way out of the we pale. Like, like, time lord. Kind of. um, so, like, if we're trying to kill the DM, we probably can't afford that. No. Like, what would it take to bring somebody back from the dead? Is that even impossible? For instance, possible? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you absolutely could do that, but it's going to require a considerable... Spending of story points. The Whovian universe has shown us it's possible in so many different ways. Yes. Yeah. Even when you're supposed to be really sort of like all the way dead and can't come back. It's we found right. a way. Uh, Not uh, only are you dead, but we locked you in a pocket of your own time. No, don't worry about it. 
We just, got you. You're good. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> and now you're immortal. <laughs> just go with it. It feels better that way. It does. And you're flying around ah, with another sociopathic immortal. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's say you want to spend some story points to do some, like, dramatic turn of events. Like, you're literally bending reality or something. You spend one to two points. Um, You remember your hat at that particular moment. When not wearing a hat would have been a tremendous faux pas. Mm. Or you remember where you dropped a vital piece of equipment. You say something like that. Mm -hmm. Three to four points is a minor effect. Uh... It's fairly expensive for your average character because you only have so many story points, but it doesn't bend reality too drastically. Like, you work out how to generate the power needed to restart the ship. Or you make the villain's henchmen fall in love with the character, allowing them to escape later. Nice. Five to six points is a medium effect. A squad of unit soldiers turn out to investigate uh, just as the characters are finding themselves outgunned. Or they learn that the only way to save another character is through an extreme sacrifice of their own. It's a life-saving plot twist, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seven to eight story points is serious, like real plot-changing shit. Uh, the TARDIS materializes around the characters after they've been thrown out of the ship's airlock into space. Oh, good save. Or so the player good. agrees that their character should be captured and work for the villains as a double agent for the entire adventure. Jeez. <laughs> Nine to ten story points is a massive effect. This is... Uh, this is reaching the levels of like, uh, and this is Moffat? this is specific, but it's like if you don't know Doctor Who, you don't know what I'm talking about. Rose absorbing the heart of the TARDIS, oh my god, and the sacrifice she and later the Doctor makes to remove the Daleks from the universe. That's a good episode. Though. And then eleven plus story points are so massively important that they would need this many to do, like trapping villains for eternity in the heart of a star, rebooting the universe. <laughs> Things that have happened in Doctor Who. For only 11 points? All right, everybody, let's go. <laughs> well, it's a variable. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they meant 11 doctors. So that's... <laughs> summon every okay. single doctor. <laughs> so that's basically... That's that's how you use story points, right? And there's a quick... Again, there's that quick key on it's the back. If you need to remind yourself what to do with them. A mm-hmm. um, couple more things. Um, uh, for attributes, just a quick rundown. Awareness. Using your senses. Coordination is dexterity and coordination. Yeah. Ingenuity is how smart you are, right? It's a pure mental acumen, right? Yeah. Your presence is your personality and your likability, right? So it's the kind of force of of yourself, your, your personal self, or on other people. Um, resolve is your determination and your willpower, right? And then strength is, you know, just physical strength. That's, you know. Pretty sure gets old. So is this, is this storytelling module in line with the show in terms of this is not about going in the dungeon and slaying all the monsters type of thing? Yeah, yeah. the game is set up in a way, the game is cool. figured in a way that's like experience the story, not like D&D style of like Don't go kill and everything. kill the thing. Cool. Yeah, and it, it, it says very large and in very bold print in the book, guns are bad. So That's good. Not to say that you can't. Hmm. I mean, the doctor just, the doctor uses weapons quite frequently during the show, despite his, you know, generally pacifist weapons. sort mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. Uh, nature. And other companions are like, no, fuck this. I'm going to shoot this guy with a crossbow or whatever. <laughs> like you can do that absolutely, but that's not the way to solve your problems. Now I'm glad you brought that up because that actually has an effect on how conflicts play out, right? For instance. When you're taking actions, and you have to decide who goes first, right? The order is talkers go first. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. Whoever wants to say a thing, convince a thing, argue a thing, they always go first. That's that first phase. Mm -hmm. Then everyone who wants to run goes next. People who need to get somewhere, and they're just focusing on that, right? I want to run to the end of the hallway and try to slide under the blast door or whatever, like, I'm going to do that. Then doers go, people who are trying to do some non-combat action. I'm going to try to get the, the control panel to work again by, by you know, fiddling with the wires, or, like, I need to uh, hit the button on the other side of the, the corridor to, see, to make the blast door to seal or, or whatever. And then combat actions go. 
So fighters always go last. <laughs> Everybody else has a chance to do things beforehand. So that is the, a way, mechanically, that the game encourages you, like, this is not about fighting. Right. There can be conflicts. There can be, like, violence and deaths, but, like, conflict is not how you, like, fighting is not how you solve your problems. You don't shoot first and ask questions later. Right. You ask a lot of questions, and then later, when you're forced to shoot, because otherwise you have a choice between genocide and genocide, you pick the genocide of the people who are assholes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. I mean, if you have to choose. If you have to choose. Right. <laughs> uh, for your skills, athletics is physical fitness and ability. Convince is straightforward, right? Fighting, straightforward. Knowledge, how much you know. And that's a relative skill, right? If you come from a time period with a tech level of, like, four, that's the Industrial Revolution, right? 18th to maybe 20th century Earth. like That's like industrial time, right? So if your knowledge in that as a TL4 character, because you come from, you know, um, uh, uh, Edinburgh in, like... 1900, right? You may be quite knowledgeable. Your knowledge skill may be very high. And the wrong thing. Well, no. Uh, maybe. For everything that that tech level would generally cover, you can, you're assumed to be competent and like not, not knowledgeable about those things. Mm -hmm. However, that's the way that knowledge doesn't become some weird catch-all skill where if you have a high knowledge, you just know everything. Because if you're in a situation where the tech level is 8, where human beings have started to like go through time, you know, like Jack Harkness and the line mm -hmm. of those manipulators, they can just travel through time. It's like the 51st century of Earth, right? Your There's knowledge like, doesn't extend to that. You don't know what the fuck this is. You could try to understand it. In the other direction as well. Yeah, like, where it's like, I may be, you know, from that 21st century, but it's like, how the hell does a steam wheel work? Exactly. Yeah. It's easier to understand <laughs> things of a tech, tech, tech level below yours, harder for above, Right. So if you were, let's say, you were the standard human being around this time period, like early 21st century, that's TL5, right? And you were trying to understand some weird mechanism from the Renaissance era, that's TL3. You'd be taking a minus two, because it's minus one per tech level down, hmm. to try to understand it. Like, well, you may at a glance say, like, okay, I generally understand how this works. But if you're trying to, like, utilize it, or if you're trying to reverse engineer it and like understand exactly how it fits together, that would apply. Now, if you were trying to understand something as a tech level 5 21st century guy, or gal, uh, trying to understand something from, let's say, the advanced interstellar period, where you're TL7, no time travel yet, but things are like, people are going to space and everything like that, like they're, they're going like FTL travel's already been invented, right? That would be, <clears throat> excuse me, Minus four, because that's minus two for tech levels you're jumping. Does that make sense? So it doubles as you go up. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, going up, up is, is two. Two, twice going as much down. as going down. Right, yeah. But you're still doing minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. Yeah. Rather than minus two, minus four, minus six, or minus Good. two, minus four, minus eight, minus 16. It's not like that. Um, so that'll give you an idea of, like, if you're trying to understand tech that's beyond you, you can still try it. And your, knowledge, be... and your knowledge skill, along with your ingenuity, can still apply because someone from the industrial era may be smart enough to eventually, like, to look at, like, a cell phone and kind of come to terms with it, like, okay, I kind of understand how this works now. It has to do with lenses and light and electricity, but it's put in this... Like, you know, they, they, can, they can come to understand that level of technology, but... A person from, you know, TL5 could just go, oh, I know what this is. No no I role needed. Right? I use this every day. So, and that's, I guess, like, even the older stuff, somebody from that time would just know how to use it. You still have to roll to use it if you're from a later time. It's just easier for you to get it. Yeah, it, it'd okay. be like looking back at an old mechanical calculator. You, in theory, know how a calculator works, but there's enough, like, weird odds and ends going on with a mechanical calculator yeah, that's like, right, going to change so over. much that you're mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. Okay, let me figure out how to yeah. do this. Yeah. I like that, because even if the technology level is lower than you, it's not just automatically assumed that you know all the things about it. Well, yeah, just just, just, just because everybody in this time period doesn't necessarily know about, you know, fucking uh, 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 
uh, cotton gins or like you know abacuses or you know how I mean, just like the, the physics of how sundials work like like you know you may like at a very you know broad level go okay I kind of know how that works yeah. but to actually use those things in daily life yeah you, know, you know you're not really prepared for that you theoretically know how it works you don't practically know watching so, people who want to use an abacus use an abacus quickly is <laughs> yes so that is so that's knowledge in a nutshell because it's not absolute it's very relative to who mm-hmm. you are where you come from in the in the tech level time timeline and um, what kind of tech you're trying to understand uh, then you've got marksman, which is, I mean, it's what it sounds like. Your skill with ranged weaponry, right? Um, medicine, science, and science is also flexible in that regard, too, right? In the same sense as knowledge, right? Um, subterfuge, which is sneaking and spying and that sort of thing. You're trying to sneak by somebody, you're using subterfuge. Survival, it does what it says in the tin, right? Technology, using and adapting technology, right? So that's different from knowledge, per se, right? Whereas knowledge is understanding, like, how it works. Uh, technology skill will be Operating. using it. I don't like, to make this thing Adjusting this thing. it, yes. And then transport is everything about driving or piloting vehicles or animals or... Submarines. Yeah. Things that are, are con- conveyances, right? Whether they're mechanical or... Organic, I guess would be the way to put it. Okay, let's see. Anything else to go over? No, it's been pretty much basic way out. Um, so, to start creating a character, um, obviously you need to have a concept of your character. I mean, I'm not going to... That's step one in everything. Um, Steven, my dice. But you have some right numbers... Here. And you put the numbers in the in the so things, four, and things right. happen. And things happen. Yes. So, dice roll. You're going to start out with 18 character points. Okay. Now, what you are going to do with those character points is put them into attributes. Now, if you are playing a human being type character, and you don't have to. You have to put... Your maximums are six. You can't go beyond that. Your minimums are one. You have to put at least one point into everything. Okay. Otherwise, you're seriously deficient in some way. right? And adventuring becomes kind of an impossibility for you. It's also your HP, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. So you don't want to intentionally, like, um, hobble yourself by only having very low... Like, if you only have so much in coordination, you have a two in coordination, you can't take very many hits that are related to coordination. But if you get zero in an attribute, that doesn't mean that you're dead. It just means that you're very hobbled in that case. Usually it takes three attributes hitting zero or getting struck with a weapon that is lethal. Like, it kills you. And again, you can use story points to, like, say, nah, that didn't happen. Or like, oh, I'm going to absorb that damage, or whatever. Like it's, a, it's a flesh wound or something, right? Yeah, so you have to put at least one into each of these. And that just that's just a base rule, right? But again, if you're human, the maxes are six. You don't have to be human, then. Okay. Now, the, what we're going to... It would be faster to go ahead and put those numbers into attributes, because... Um, if you want to play something that's not human, that has to do with the traits that you're going to buy. Okay? Okay. Like, you can buy the trait um, alien, for instance, and then you're just an alien, right? And then you kind of... It's like a gateway to other traits, like alien appearance, right? Which means that you look different uh, from... Yeah. Or you look weird to other humanoids, or you have, like, tentacles on your face, or whatever. <laughs> You could have fast healing, or, you know, uh, you could be capable of, like, psychic powers, or te- you could be technically immortal, or, you know, you have telepathy, or, or whatever. You can also buy traits that allow you to become, like, androids or robots, for instance. Cyborgs. Cyborgs, yeah. Like, you could do those things. Never go full Cyberman. <laughs> you can buy traits that enable you to become a Time Lord, right? So you're creating a Time Lord character. 
that that is that's slightly more complicated. Not not as complicated as it sounds, but um, you can absolutely create a time lord character. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you could be attuned to the vortex, like the the time traveling, like d- like not dimension exactly, but like the maelstrom that you use your wits and skill to navigate in order to travel through space time, right? Now, when you become an alien, right, um, your attributes can be above level six because you're not you're not human anymore, right? You don't you're not bound by those those restrictions. However, there are less mechanical and more narrative consequences, right? Like if you travel to a planet that is just human beings, they are. They are in the Iron Age, and you have a tentacle growing out of your face. Mm -hmm. They will consider you a monster, and they will try to kill you. Right? An abomination from God. So that's kind of like, that's sort of the balancing factor. Plus, you're spending um, points that you would have spent on other traits, like, you know, being, you know, conventionally attractive, or like, being really good at noticing things, or or whatever. Um, You're instead spending them on simply being an alien. So that's like the balancing factor. Now, in the like, on in the base rules, you would start with twenty-four character points, mm-hmm. but I'm giving you eighteen and saving six of them to buy traits with. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Because that's a very simple, balanced way to do things. Now later, you can take traits that give you more character points back. Kind of like uh, Savage Worlds, where you're doing like flaws, kind of yeah, things. edges and hindrances, you nice. know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, you, if you take that, like your heart of hearing or something like that, you may get one character point back that you can then put into your attributes or, yeah. into, your, or into another a good trait that you want to buy, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just work with eighteen into the attributes right now and save those six left over just to get to get some good traits oh, cool. at the end. And I haven't, and I have some like sort of uh, baselines about what these numbers mean in the attributes, right? Generally speaking, in in attributes, like let's say you wanted to take a three in presence, generally likable and easy to get on with, but not necessarily a strong leader. That's like a human average, right? Two or three, you know. You're all right. Get in. If you have a resolve of six, which is, again, six is a human maximum, right? You're the paragon of virtue, morally immovable, and able to resist almost any temptation or fear. Mm. Well, that doesn't describe me at all. (laughs) If your coordination is one, you may have very poor control over your bodily movements, possibly due to being ungainly or a very slow reaction time. Coordination is one. You have MS? A lot lower than your average person who's going to have, like, three, maybe two if they're older. Or clumsy. So what attributes, Slightly. like, if you were going for, say, a persuasive entity, I'm assuming presence and ingenuity? Well, if you, if you want to make, like, reasonable arguments, if you want to go from, like, if you're trying to be persuasive in the sense of, like, look, I know what I'm talking about, you can trust me. Then ingenuity and presence would be, would be there. Yeah. If you were trying to make, uh, persu- to bullshit. If you're trying to make persuasive arguments from the place of like, like, I'm your I'm your superior officer, right? I have been in war. Presence I know what I'm talking resolve. about. Presence and resolve, or even strength in that respect. If you're trying to tower over your, your your subordinates or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Done. Vending. What is one? One in what? In anything. It's just one is your hobble. Yeah. One is like the lowest you can buzz it. Like resolve one. Weak willed and easily persuaded. Okay. Presence one. Socially inept or just plain rude. Usually unintentional. Okay. Uh, ingenuity one. They may not necessarily be stupid, but it takes them a little longer than your average person to work things out. Or they may be from a primitive culture that doesn't respect reasoning or learning. Right. What about one in strength? One in strength. 
Your typical weakling, winded, answering the door. Has difficulty opening a packet of crisps. <laughs> well, we gotta get that packet of crisps open, so I guess that's a two. Strength two, weaker than normal, struggles changing a car tire, gets out of breath running for the bus. Okay. Strength three, average human. Going up three flights of stairs here. I mean, it'll take the wind out of you, right? Yeah. Strength six, human peak, capable of picking people up and throwing them over their heads. So if someone's just really good at something, that'd be like your five. Yes. Well, that's attributes, right? If you, if you want to think about it with skills, then... You know, I'm just like, kind of, if, if this is a, an attribute that you would say, this is someone who's just good at this attribute. Condition. Condition that would be like a five. Well, it's compared to somebody else, right? Okay. If you're stronger than the average, or better than the average, that's like four. If you're like one of the, like, like strength five, the toughest athlete, sportsmen, women, right? Like, you're, a, you're an exceptional... Um, Example of that. Okay. Um, strength six would be like the peak, right? Six, six of anything is the human peak, anyway. Two is less than normal, less than average, and then one is like the bottom. Okay. So three, two, four, four, and three, two. I can be okay. You have to put one in each. You got eighteen points. And remember to mark your total values into the hexagons in the attributes because the dots are going to change, right? Okay, I can be okay with that. Nothing super high, nothing super low. Not about min-maxing. So once you've done that, um, so you've got your six left over, remember that, um, you, that you can spend on, on traits later, right? And then you have uh, skill points, right? You have 18 of those. Now the way the uh, skill points are going to work is that when you are buying skills, right, um, you, don't necess- you don't have to put baselines in every skill. Like, not everyone's going to be skilled, skilled in everything, right? Mm-hmm. That's why they have unskilled. Penalties. Generally speaking, like, the, the book would suggest, like, okay, pick one or two skills that are your pastime or maybe your occupation. Put three or four points into those. Pick a skill or two you think would be handy, based on uh, a character you are. Put two points in those, and then just scatter the rest of them as you see fit. Right. Now, the thing to note about character creation is that no skill can be above level five. Unless you have a damn good reason for that being that way. Like, if you're a university professor or a medical diagnostician, you may be allowed to put more than five points into a skill. But then it should only be in the skill that reflects that character's profession. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Right. Like medicine might be six. But that's because you're, Dr. you're an oncologist or you're a medical... Well, no, Dr. Strange isn't good, yeah. good at everything. He's a surgeon, right? Yeah, well... Well, if he's surgery, then, like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, a and a wizard. Well, yeah, yeah but we don't have a wizard. I think skill. he is pretty good at it. So how many skill points do we start with? 18. Because he, he, he learns super fast. That's his thing. He has an idea yeah. yeah. Does he? Yeah, yeah, because that's and uh, what he initially was like. Oh, hey, I was able to learn all this just because I can like memorize anything and I see it. And then the uh, like person there is like, nope, nope, that's not the reason. You're special because we need it for narrative purposes. Get over here. You're part of the team now. Okay. And you said five is the max on these. Five is the max on the skills, unless. Character-wise, you, you can make sense reasons. why there would be more in that skill. Okay. And again, you don't have to put anything in certain skills if you don't want them. If you don't want to be any good at medicine, that's fine. That makes sense. How? So, I suppose maybe manipulation, that would make sense. Okay. Convince and subterfuge are sort of two sides of a different coin. Right? Yeah. They're both getting buttons. Convince would still be lying, I think. But subterfuge would be like manipulation to get you to do the thing that might hurt you. In a maybe a non direct way, right? You know? Like uh, rearranging a person's social calendar so that they end up like going to the wrong 
function or whatever and making an embarrassment of themselves. That could be an application of subterfuge, right? Mm -hmm. Most people are going to use subterfuge in the sense that it's like stealth, right? Or sleight of hand or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Gotta get all sneaky. And again, remember, you have that blank, so if you want to put a specific skill that isn't covered by the other skills and like put some points into that, you absolutely can. But you don't have to. 18 points in parkour. No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Not Michael Scott. <laughs> so skills, levels, this is generally speaking what they mean, right? If you're a one in a skill, you're a novice. Two, you're an amateur. Three, you're proficient. Four, you're seasoned. Five, you're an expert. And six, you're a genius in the thing. Now, one thing to note is that normally, in like the base game, without these little tweaks that I'm implementing, mm -hmm. if you were doing something unskilled, it would be a minus four penalty. But looking at the probability of that four, with 2d6 and the four. difficulty levels and stuff like the that, skills? that really mm -hmm. isn't necessary. 18? That's what you said, right? right? It's 18 for skills? 18 for skills, okay. yeah. Um, like and then... Uh, so there's no need to attack that on when you could easily, I as the, the games master could say like, okay, well no, this is a hard difficulty, which is like 18, right? And so statistically it becomes unlikely but not impossible. And like, so there's no reason to like shoot people in the foot by giving them this unskilled attempt thing. Plus it's easier on me because nobody has to remember that. You, know? you can try it, but the odds are against you. And if you want to take craft, you know, in the original, you know, skill set and put that down there in the blank, you absolutely can. As a reminder, craft is an all-encompassing skill that covers all manners of creative activities. Obviously, it's different from, like, boat building and metalworking or craft, right? But, like, rapping and painting and dancing and stuff would be better set by calling that art, right? Arts. For performance. Okay. Skills are done. So once you put uh, points into your skills, right? Um, then we're going to go about getting traits, right? Like those are like the edges and hindrances in, in Savage Worlds. The way that works is that um, they're labeled into like major and minor. Minor costs one point. Or, if it's a bad trait, it gives you one character point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Majors do the same thing. Plus two or minus two character points, depending on if they're good or bad traits. Um, some of them are special, like alien or cyborg or whatever, and they might require prerequisites or whatever. They may cost more than those basic values, right? And those are listed. And then there's some that can be bought multiple times, right? Like, you might be really sharp in your hearing and your smell, right? Those would be two separate traits that you're technically buying tw 
twice. It, it you know what I mean? Sense. You're buying the same thing twice, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Benefits stack. So. Looks like there's pages of trades. There's a bunch of trades, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> that's small text, too. A lot of these don't necessarily have to, like, are not relevant. Like, if you're not playing a Time Lord character, then just ignore those traits, right? Gadget traits are for gadgets. They're not for people. Unless you're playing a robot, then you could put a gadget trait into you, like, as a built-in mm -hmm. thingy, right? Uh, base traits are for, like, bases. TARDIS traits are for TARDISes. So, like, a lot of this is not okay, relevant to yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I was a little worried about just the number of traits I saw there. Yeah, because we're going to have to read them all. So remember, you have six character points left over to buy traits. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have character points that you're not going to spend on traits, you can then convert them into skill points. Cool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could take a couple of bad traits and take a handful of good traits and say, oh, i got like two character points left. What do I do with this? I don't want to buy another good trait necessarily. Well, you can just turn those into skill points and just pump those in. Right? Sounds good. Okay. So, good traits. Agent of Scotland Yard. Hmm. Nice. Animal Friendship. Another Lifetime. Arrogant. Why are you looking at trait? me? As I, a, I wasn't trying to. <laughs> That's a good trait? It's a minor good trait. What does that do? It gains, character gains plus two to resisting fear and feelings of hopelessness. But they suffer minus one to social interactions with those they consider inferior. Attractive. Hey, you looked at you that time. <laughs> What's the sure. benefit of that one? <laughs> Attractive. Yeah. Um, whenever that would come into play, you get plus two to the roles that are that's relevant. Okay. Right. Either it's charming or getting information out of someone. Like if someone's predisposed to your attractiveness, then like that's plus two on that. How many points is that? Attractive is a minor good trait, so that costs one character point. Okay. Backup, minor major. Backup? You have backup, I think. Okay. That you can call in. Huh. Some of these are from other um, source books that I have. I just don't mm -hmm. have right in front of me. Biochemical genius. What's that? Character gains areas of expertise for the science skill in biology and chemistry and may create biological or chemical gadgets much like you can use the science skill for tech stuff right? or tech stuff um, now by spending one um, give me a second spending one I think it's skill point but let me, let me double check that One skill point at character creation will give you an area of expertise. Okay? Okay. So if you wanted to put an area of expertise like science, chemistry, you'd spend one skill point, provided you're at level three or above. Because you have to be like of a certain competency level. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Then, if that area of ex expertise applies, you get a plus two bonus. Nice. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. So that's what they're talking about when they say like areas of expertise. You could be a boffin, right? The old World War II term for the the gadget makers and, and, and tinkerers, right? Which allows you to create gadgets through a the fine art of jiggery pokery, nice. as they call it. Um, you can be brave. <coughs> What's brave? It's when you're not scared. Yeah. What's the good trait though? The, it's a minor good trait, so it costs one. The brave trait provides plus two to any resolve roll when the character could get scared or need to show their courage. Is there a, a level of resolve you have to have in order to take it? No. No prerequisites. And it's how many? Plus two. One character point. One character It's point. a plus two bonus. To resolve rolls in circumstances where brave would help you, right? Cannot be taken with cowardly, though individual phobia bad traits can still be purchased. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, you have your weakness. Mm -hmm. Burn Essence. I don't know what that is, but I can look it up. Charming. Code What's the benefit to Charming? Charming. It's a minor good trait, so it costs one character point. Okay. Plus two bonus 
uh, when the character is trying to charm their way through an encounter. Okay. Whenever that would be relevant. Right. Useful for talking your way out of being killed, but not always suitable for every social situation. <laughs> you can try. Not with that attitude. Code breaker. What's that? Let me look. Sorry. Defending the earth. Ah. It's the person that it's probably breaks like plus and things. two to technology. You can have a whole windwalker. Wind, uh, wind windwalker. Yeah, windwalker. Code breaker. I think that was a goddamn brand. Hmm? No, no, that's digital fortress. Code breaker which, is which a is minor good trait. <coughs> Characters with this trait gain a plus two bonus to ingenuity like and knowledge brand. rolls when trying to decode, decipher, or transfer. Yes, I would like that. How many is that? That's one character point because it's minor point. good. Okay. Cost to one. So it's code breaker. Mm-hmm. Code and breaker. It's plus two. Plus two to ingenuity and knowledge rolls when trying to decode, decipher, or translate. Or translate. It's a trait from the the unit source book because it makes sense because they're soldiers. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Crack shot. Cutting edge technology, danger sense, <laughs> detect truth. What's that benefit? Detect truth. I mean, I take danger sense. You could totally take danger sense. Well, I'm just gonna probably leave and like. It's okay. You can just be the first one to die. It's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just the doctor. It's like, okay, peace out. Uh, now, detect truth requires you to be an alien, a psychic, or a robot. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Devotion. Empathic. Interested in empathic. Empathic. That is just a basic thing. It's a minor good trait, so it's going to cost one. Plus two bonus on any rolls when they're trying to em- empathize with or read another person. Or read. This could be a simple presence plus convince to reassure someone who's panicking in the middle of a battle, or awareness plus ingenuity to try to read another's actions and speech to see if they're lying. So that would I will spend a cover that. Okay. That's good. That's good. Epicurean tastes. Can you say that's plus two? That's plus two. Yes. Go on. <laughs> Epicurean tastes is an is an unusual one. Hmm. Um, some. Uh, some Time Lords have this as a prerequisite. It's not a specifically Time Lord thing, but a lot of them tend to have it. Well, some of them do, right? It, you'd, you'd, you'd see it when it shows up. Did I spell it correctly? Nope. No, I did not. It's... There we go. Epicurean. I put an, an I and said an E. The character has a sensitive mental and physical palate and appreciates the finer things in life, like good food, good drink, fashionable clothing, and fine art. The character gains a plus two bonus on any roll to judge the quality of luxury items. They also gain a plus two bonus to any roll to impress others with their sense of taste, Hmm. assuming the targets are actually impressed by such things. Jelly baby? (laughs) Maybe. In some cultures, that might be a luxury Mm -hmm. item, yeah. Face in the crowd. Hmm. Failed mind wipe. Nice. Fast healing, which is another one of those, like, humans don't do that. Mm-hmm. Although I think you may be able to take a minor version of that. Michael Phelps probably recovered. No, yeah, if you were a human, you could take fast healing, yeah. It wouldn't be like, I'm literally regrowing <laughs> bullet wounds right before your eyes, you know. It would help you you heal faster. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead and trade this fast healing. <laughs> what kind of trade? It's a major good trade. Now again, there's a special version of that where like you're an alien or a robot or something, and you're so. What would normally happen is that any attribute you've lost due to injury is regained at a rate of one point per hour. The special version is one point per minute. <laughs> Wow. Normally it takes longer to do that. And you have to spend story points and stuff like that. With fast healing, you could just be like, just give me like two hours and I'm fine. Five rounds rapid. 
you know anything about unit, they'll just, that's what the brigadier likes to tell them. That's how many bullets to put into, <laughs> into a thing. Real quick. Friends? What's the... It's, it's you have friends? Okay. It doesn't actually like make it... They own an apartment. It's above a coffee shop. M- minor trick. Minor trait is like a friend of a friend. You know someone who knows someone. Okay. Uh, major trait is a reliable person whose information is accurate. Like, could be somebody like high up, like works in a you know, the ministry or like, you know, maybe someone in units. Like, you're getting solid information. So, like, jewels for Salem. Yes. In our city yep. Okay. Have I been here before? Uh, you want something? Just a drop of. Have I been here before? <laughs> Give me a moment. <clears throat> Drifting around the corner. <laughs> it's like the classic. That, that that's how you define like eighties like techno electro. It's just like that is a back when it was called techno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Time Lord thing. It's okay. <laughs> Have I been here before? That's how you solve the Major good. Tra- or, 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 Sometimes you get somewhere before you arrive when you're traveling. Mm-hmm. Why only kill one when you can kill both? The character has an innate sense of familiarity when they arrive somewhere for the first time, even though in its past they've already visited. There's Plus two like to ingenuity the first time they, they arrive on a new like planet <laughs> or point in history. Uh, Shot that down for later. It's crazy. I'm gonna take that. They, they even like have the exchange thing Healer. Like, where they change directions. So it's like a hot shot. Hypnosis. <laughs> Indomitable. Ooh, that sounds ah. nice. Indomitable. Mm-hmm. That's probably like <coughs> plus to resolve. Major good trait. Plus four bonus to any rolls to resist becoming possessed, hypnotized, psychically controlled, or similar. Can you do hypnosis as a human, or do you have to be an alien? Hypnosis is no. You can be you can be a human if you want to do that. What's the benefit? As a minor trait, plus two to any social interaction where you're trying to either calm someone down or get them to do what you'd like. Dependent on the situation, of course. So you have to be able to see your target. Mm-hmm. As a major trait. And here, that's a minor trait to get okay. plus two. Well, the major trait works the same way, but if the character succeeds in hypnotizing the subject, they can make them do anything not intrinsically against their nature. Zach, are you going to play the master? I have concerns about the traits you should. No, oh, that would be sorry. the that would be the special version. That costs three points and is like full on mind control. Okay. Ooh. Only for alien or special characters. And so, does it? What does it add to the role for the major? Uh, it it still adds that plus two bonus to social interactions, yeah. but you if you if you hypnotize the subject, you can make them do something that's not against their nature. Cool. Like they won't harm a friend or themselves. Get wider application. Yeah. <laughs> I have a point. Innocent. Inspiring love. Jack of all trades. What's that? Jack of all trades. You're Walmart. B.A. You're Walmart. See if I had to guess, that's probably like, like you don't get the unskilled penalty. I hope so. That'd be cool. Well, we don't have an unskilled penalty. Yep. That's why it might That's true. Out. To you. But it would still be... Or or it might Let's make see. it minus two instead of minus four. Cause Could be. Uh, make it a little more reasonable. It is exactly what you think it is. Yes, the character knows a little bit about everything, ignores any penalties for being unskilled when making an action. Any. Role, so, it's not. so I can't Ooh. take that? Basically, everybody has it would be a waste. all trades. Everybody has that right now. Yeah. Any penalties for being unskilled. So no, yeah, okay. it's not, not really relevant. All right. Got it for free. Yeah, everybody cool. has that. Keen senses. I guess it could be a major. I don't think anybody needs to take Lamastine technologist, so I'm just going to skip that one. Uh? <laughs> Linguist. Well, that's what we have the TARDIS for, isn't it? I mean, if it's not on the frets, then yes. What's the benefit mm-hmm. of a linguist? Linguist. I'm just saying, the TARDIS translates everything into English. As a minor good trait, the character is familiar with several languages and can pick up new ones easily. They start play knowing three additional languages, and from that point forward can spend a story point to acquire a new language whenever it would come up in play. The character can only learn languages for which their backstory would allow. 
There's no way for a 17th century French woman to know the Martian tongue spoken by the ice warriors. Okay. But an Earth Imperial pilot in the 26th century could know Draconia. As a major good trait, the character is a universal translator. They start by knowing six additional languages and may learn any language by spending a story point, no matter how obscure or alien, providing they've had an opportunity to study the basics. Okay. That sounds fun. I think I'm going to take that. That having been said, most characters are familiar with like their native language and maybe one other. Right? Like English and Spanish. Right? Took a, mm-hmm. They're going to take Classic. universal translator? Yeah. Well, well, Fantastic. So that's two character points yep. for a linguist major. Six additional languages, and you can spend a story point to just know a language. Provided you have an opportunity to study the basics. You okay. just buy all the dictionaries and all of their points. You can be lucky. Punk. What's lucky? Real lucky. Ones. If you roll two ones on your dice, on the d6s, right? Mm-hmm. You can re-roll and keep the second result. You don't get to... If you re-roll and still get ones... Then they're just ones. Then you just have to keep those. But it gives you an opportunity to roll something else to get a better result. How many points is that? That's minor good, so that's one character point. Remember, you have six available right now. I know. And it's only when you roll two ones? Yeah, when you roll two ones on your dice, you can re-roll. Now, unlucky is the exact opposite of that. If you roll two sixes, you have to roll again. That feels bad. Machine. Are you literally a machine? I think so. Menacing. Mental calculator. Nice. Military rank. You can have a military rank. Noble. Owed favor. Someone owes you a favor. I'm remembering that correctly. Yep. Yeah. Um, pet. Pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Percussive maintenance. Nice. The the Fonzie routine where you can just elbow the jukebox and it works. Right? Person of repute. Photographic memory. If there's a person of repute, I have to imagine there is a person of ill repute as well. Yes. What's photographic memory? Photographic memory. If the character knows they're going to have to remember something at a later time, such as the combination to a lock or the instructions to program a computer, they can spend a moment to just take it in and commit it to memory. If they want to recall the information, they don't have to roll, they can just do it. But they must have declared that they've taken the time to concentrate and remember it at the same time. And that's one point? That's two points. It's a major good. Oh, okay. Similarly, if they want to remember something that they haven't actively committed to memory, there's a chance to do that. Um, there's a chance it may be stored in there somewhere along with last week's shopping list or what time that film is on they wanted to watch. Mm. To recall something vital that they may have only glanced at or possibly missed altogether, they can spend a story point. Okay. Who just have seen that. Cool. Positive outlook. Psychic shield, psychic stun. Those are obviously, you're going to be a psychic for that. However, you can be, you can have psychic training. Psychic paper. Psychic paper is a gadget. But you can't. <laughs> I just you specifically. Yeah. Seems unfair. Psychic training is something that anybody can take. It's not like a. It's not like psychic stun or something. It's not like a. Does this require alien? I've been leaning towards alien. As a uh, psychic just requires you to be either psychic or alien, right? Because okay. you could just be. A psychic humanoid, but you're not necessarily an alien exactly. You just develop psychic powers. Um, do you want me to look at psychic shield or psychic stun for you? Shield sounds interesting. Psychic shield. Start there. Shield. Psychic shield. Depending on how that works, I may revisit it later. Okay. So you have to have you have to be psychic. Right? It's a major good trait. 
The character can manifest a powerful shield of mental energy that protects them from physical harm. Uh, you don't have to roll to manifest the shield, but if the character performs any other action, they have to make a resolve plus awareness roll against difficulty of 18. Whew. Which is, I mean, it's not that bad. That's, you know. Yeah, if you have two traits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they fail it, the shield vanishes because they've lost their concentration. The shield can absorb twice the character's resolve and damage points. Each round it is maintained. Lethal damage is considered 12 damage for purposes of, you know, shield damage. So if it takes a lethal shot, that's 12 damage right off. Normally lethal, if you take that, you just die. Yeah. Right. No if, hands, or buts, you are now dead. Exactly. Now, psychic training is a minor good trait, and that's like some unit people have that, and, mm-hmm. like, they get a plus two bonus to resolve rolls when trying to resist psychic attack or deception, including that of, like, psychic paper, for instance. They're like... Ah, that's bullshit. Yeah. I'm, I'm not seeing anything. But that's just cardboard. Yeah. You've just shown me a piece of paper. It's blank. Let's see here. Quick reflexes. What's that? Quick reflexes is... It's a minor good, so it costs one. Mm-hmm. Plus two um, if two or more people are acting in a single phase, talking, running, doing, whatever, you always go first. Mm. person with quick reflexes always goes first in that phase. Um, if more than one person in a phase has that same trait, then you compare the the attributes. But anyway, okay. Quick reflex is always good. So if you want to do something, somebody else wants to do something, you're always going to go first in that phase, right? You're going to do your thing first. You said that's minor. It is a minor good trait. Costs one point. Reliable, resourceful pockets. Again, another common time lord trait where you just reach in and. Get the thing that you what need. What is that? That sounds fun. Resourceful pockets. Jelly babies? <laughs> sounds like a purse. Yes, I have this. <laughs> the player can either spend a story point and find the thing they need, or roll a couple of dice. If they get a double, rolling two ones or two threes, for example, then they find something helpful in their pocket. If you don't, then you don't get it. So it, allow, so it basically allows you to manifest things. You don't have to spend a story point to say, oh, I have this now. You could go, uh, yeah, you could I have go, it. oh, I rolled two threes. I just happen to have this. Here's a, Is that one? It's a cricket pole. It's a minor good? That's a minor good trait, so it costs one point. Sometimes you just got to go cricketing. Whoa. Reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Mm-mm. Techno battle. Run for your life. Screamer. It's a good trait, I promise. Sounds great. Sense of direction. Good thing to have. Sharpshooter. Single minded. Sleuth. Stubborn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like I naturally have that. I don't Symbiotic need to. nuclei. That's a fun one. But if you want okay. mechanical benefits. <laughs> Tech sensitive. What's tech sensitive? Tech sensitive. Look at the old archive here. Listening for dog gurgling sounds. Tech sensitive. That is a. You have to be psychic for that. Oh, okay. It's like you're go. sensing alien technology. Go on. Do you want to go? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the character. I happen to be a psychic myself. The character I'm automatically I'm detects the presence of alien technology within a 10 foot radius. A uh, few things will shield against this ability. So the character might feel something on the other side of a wall, but not know how to reach it, for instance. If the character is in proximity to a lot of alien tech, the background feelings may negate this effect, although specific powerful items might still be detected through the haze. Is this a minor? It's You could do minor or major. If you were doing it at a minor, you can only detect technology from a particular species. Major would be anything that's not native to Earth. Technically adept. Time Lord adept. Time Lord Mentor. Time Traveler. I mean that that kind of sounds Again, funny. you don't have to be a Time Lord, you can be yeah. just a time traveler. I, I would like to know about this time traveling. Time traveling, you say. Okay. Traveling it seems seems unlikely, but fine. 
Players define the character's home technology level, and using technology from blah, 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 the time traveler trait records additional tech levels that they're comfortable with. Mm. That's what makes sense. Lower technology levels to their home level are minor good traits. More advanced tech levels are major good traits. And it can be purchased more than once. Can't? Or can? Can. 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 Yeah, that okay. makes sense. So okay. time periods you're familiar with, effectively. And can you use either one as your like level of where you're going for uh, for like your adjustment? Is minor only from before and major after? Yes. Or? Okay. Major is for tech levels above what you your character's from, and minor is for tech levels below what you're from. But like after you have that set, if you got like tech level seven as your familiar. Could you then roll tech level six at a minus one instead of like a plus two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically whatever's most adv- advantageous to you based on your okay. yeah, understanding of tech levels. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we get cool. to know what tech level we're actually playing in? Well, see, that's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. you're a tiny, you're space time travelers, so you you know you can be from the twenty first century. You can be from the 51st century, like, you can be a cave person, like, whatever. Like, basically you just decide, you say, okay, I'm from this tech level. I'm from this planet or this time and say, like, you commit to it. You say, there you go. I'm from the Victorian times. I'm tech level four, period. But if you time travel, like... Now, again, if you're in the process of like traveling in the TARDIS, you may gain the trait Time mm-hmm. Traveler TL5 or something like because you've been around the tech and you kind of get it, right? Um, but it. starting with it, you know, you're having to pay character points, right? Mm-hmm. And so that allows you to like know more about time period technology that's not your own. Uh, tough. What's that one? Tough is pretty good. It reduces the amount of damage that would normally be deducted from your attributes by two. So it's a soak of two. Nice. Okay. How much is that? Is that good? That's probably a major. That's minor good. Cool. It's one character point. Cool. It's a good minor. Take that damage. Take that soak. So that's two, like, period. Right. So if you're taking six damage across several attributes... Like that's minus two, so you have to take four damage across several attributes, and yeah. then you could then justify it by saying like, okay, well, I'm going to split that into three coordination and one this, right, or two coordination and two that. That's or, the aggregate. Yeah. True connection. Mm. Unthreatening. Has it used? Voice of authority. And voice well of mannered. That, that's the that's the high pitched voice. And those are all the good traits. I want to trip into the whole alien and psychic stuff. Special traits. Got it. Yeah. So alien, mm-hmm. it's pretty straightforward. Um, basically, it's like a gateway trait. Uh, you buy that, and then... Um, Is it a major or minor? It costs two character points. Okay. It's technically labeled as a special, but it costs mm-hmm. about as much as a, a major, right? The alien tra- trait means your character's from another planet... Now, the base level when you buy alien means that you kind of look you look human. Like you look similar to everybody else on Earth, but you're from another planet. It, that enables you again to purchase other alien traits like alien appearance, which makes you like Not look low. distinctively different from mm-hmm. being a human. And your attributes can be above level 6, right? But again, those downsides like I'm going to capture you for science. Oh no. Right there. So, when you buy alien, that enables you to pick things like Alien appearance. Um, uh, Is that a plus or a minus? Because it sounds like a minus. It depends. Uh, Fast healing, the special kind, where you're like you're regenerating in front of. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. You're recovering in front of somebody. Like ah, my skin is stitching back together. You could feel the turn of the universe. Whoa. You could be technically immortal. Is that technically? Well, it depends on what kind you're buying. Okay. 
best kind. You could be the last of your kind. You could be psychic. Uh, I think psychic makes sense with what I'm going with. You could have again, like, um, connection to the vortex. You can have battle call, berserker, clone, Dalek factor, (laughs) damage increase, death habit. What does clone do? Clone. I'm I'm curious about this. Does this give me the ability to make a character who can literally be like paranoia off and back on again? I don't quite think so. But we're gonna look at it because I want this to happen for you. Okay. Clone is a special good trait costing three character points and one story point. Mm. All right. Taken from your like max. Your this will eventually be the max. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The character has a clone, a perfect physical copy of themselves, stored securely. If they ever die, the clone will be automatically activated and take their place. <laughs> In order to make sure the clone knows everything they know, they must regularly visit the storage facility to update the clone's memory engrams. If they don't, when the clone is activated, they'll only have memories up to the last update. The character literally has another life as the effect, which has the attributes, skills, traits, and memories of whenever it was last updated. So, That's tempting. But for three, that's pretty heavy. Uh, three and a story point. And a story point. You could have a disembodied head. Always a good time. Can, can you be the lady with whose face on Cassandra? stretch skin? Cassandra? I mean, like, you could if you wanted to. You could find a way to make that work. You can be an expert in some spe- spe- specific thing, right? That's technically a special shape that you don't have to be an alien for, I don't think. Mm-hmm. But, uh, failed cyber conversion. <laughs> uh, you could have the human factor. Imprinted memories. What's the human factor? The human factor. When you want to play an alien who wants to be human. So the doctor? I mean, effectively, yeah. The doctor doesn't want to be human. <laughs> Enjoy spending time around him. He really likes people, so. I actually have this source book, but I'm not going to go over and pick it up. Buried under some other books. <laughs> okay. PDFs are just quicker. Especially for why it's nice having a digital DSM. Mm-hmm. Control after diagnosis. Human factor. Special good trait. It costs four character points. However, mm-hmm. here are the bonuses. It increases your resolve by one and gives you either the empathetic the excuse me, the empathic or brave traits. Hmm. It also makes the possessor more compassionate, just generally speaking. Most importantly, it gives you an extra two story points. There it is. Because you are, by God, you're a representative of the human race, <laughs> as opposed to those dirty Daleks. <laughs> this is coming from the second Doctor's source book. So, <laughs> precognition. Is that under psychic? Yes. Okay. So what what does base psychic require? That is it a minor or a major? Base psychic costs two points to purchase. Okay. Or one point if you already have psychic training. Uh, Interesting. Uh, it allows you to the same cost. Mm-hmm. basically intrude onto people's minds. Right. Succeed at a resolve plus awareness test. Target's got to be within visual range. And the trait provides the character with a plus four bonus on the roll. Dang. If the target's unwilling, they can try to resist, naturally. Both sides can spend story points if they're concentrating intently. Yeah. Psychic also gives a plus four bonus when the character attempts to resist having their mind read or resist possession. And then psychic enables you to get things like precognition or psychometry or, or telepathy, telekinesis, that sort of thing. But I think I'm giving up Universal Translator and going hard on Psychic. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> well, so that sure provided that the longer. translation um, oh. matrix doesn't, like, fail in the TARDIS, then you're good to go, right? Okay, right. Everyone that speaks that English. Yeah. Of course, if you, of course, if you don't have a TARDIS, then you're fucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happens. Just to say. We've got the wrist thingies, right? <laughs> oh, the vortex manipulators? Yeah, maybe. You can be. You can talk to everything. 
You can be unfeeling. <laughs> That's not nice. a bad trait. You can be a veteran of unit. <laughs> Uncreative. What is unfeeling? Since it's a negative trait, and I'm probably going to need some traits back here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go over the basic bad traits in a minute, but... Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? To get more story points. Uh, Zoe, what are you doing? You've got a negative four penalty to any social spe social conflict that hinges on your understanding of these things you human call love, <laughs> or fear, or doubt, or jealousy, or happiness, or good, or evil, or whatever. You don't get. Emotions. That's that's pretty heavy. Okay. It's a special bad trait, so I'm not sure how many character points it would give you. So what, you're like, what was it, was that psychotic? Uh, technically, no. Psychotic is just you have a losing. So technically, some of these traits are coming from like the source books where they describe certain characters from so Doctor Who, uh, like previous uh, episodes or something. This is specifically yeah, talking about the Eternals in uh, the Fifth that's Doctor's not time. A, you said something more. But then you're what people sense. think. And just disconnected. Here are some specific alien traits, if you mm -hmm. want to know, like... Oh, you, are you just doing psychic, or are you going alien, too? Alien psychic, yeah. Okay. I'd, alien. You have some fun with that. Additional limbs. It's just going to be a brain energy. That, that's a negative? No, this, I'm oh, just reading the okay. things out for you. Um, alien appearance. Mm -hmm. Alien organs. Alien senses. Armor. Aura. Burrowing. Mm, nice. Climbing. Enslaved. Environmental. Is enslaved a negative? It's a major bad. Yes. Curious. <laughs> enslaved. Mm -hmm. It's like those people with the orbs. Is enslaved. The orb. I like that. Oh, no. Pictures from the show. No. I'll have to look that up in a minute. Um, okay. no fast. You could have a fear factor. All the villains, all the monsters and stuff like that have a fear oh, factor. Okay. That if you encounter them, you have to make yeah, a roll to like resolve. resist getting okay. Okay. fucked up with. Yeah, and yes, if you fail, you're like, I'm not going to do anything except not look at you. Or I'm not going to attack you. That's or, what the courage stuff is all about. Um, flight. Frenzy. Gulp. Exclamation point. It simply uh, says. Uh, <laughs> immaterial. Getting into more. Immortal. Like you have an immunity to something? Go to bed. Well, I have it Impervious. Infection. Invisible. Interesting. Natural weapons. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Networked, kind of like the the Cybermen, and they're all kind of connected. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Possess, propulsion, nice. replication, <laughs> resilient, resistance. Replication sounds like what you wanted. Shape shift. Oh, don't tempt me with shape shifting. Slime trail. <laughs> Slow. Snap. Quest, uh, exclamation point. Special. Swarm. Is it with a bunch of dots? Symbiotic consciousness. Is it? Teleport. Third eye. Trade value. Trample. And vortex. Third eye. Oh, and, um, excuse me, worship field. So that's. Is that like aura, except amplified to a worship oh. field? I think it compels people to worship you. <laughs> I mean, there's some fun to be had there, but... Th that's how you get to be an alien and not feel like, a, you know, they're not going to instantly kill you on those primitive planets, though. That, that's, that's what you go for. Well. I'd like to give the Time Lord, Time Lady traits, excuse me. Okay. Now, the, the Time Lord stuff, like I said, gets, it gets a little bit... Messy, if funny. you want to create a Time Lord, we need to, like, sit down and start off. Not really. It's just that, like, they get extra. Like you can take the experienced good trait several times, and the time traveler trait several times, and it gives you more character points because you've lived more skill points because you've lived hundreds of years, and then like you pump those back in. I feel want to be time lord. So. Okay, well then, let's do it. I actually have a pre-made thing for you. You don't have okay. to even worry about. It. Nice. Um, 
because you knew one of us was going to play Time Lord. Well, you don't have to. That's the thing. And you don't. But, no, so, but you, somebody was going to lean in. Some, I, any, it was going to be me. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> so, I, but I before I do that, here are the here are the bad traits. General bad traits. Cool. And again, Everybody minor right gives down. you one character point. Major gives you two. Right. Adversary could be minor or major, depending on who your adversary is. Sounds fun. All too much. What's I don't know. that? I don't know what that one is, but I will look it up for you. <laughs> it sounds very dramatic. Also, I think our daughter's ready to film. Almost certainly is. If you're going to play the Doctor Who RPG, you might as well be a Time Lord, right? Or at least have one. Or at least, yeah, yeah. like have at least one and, or be an alien or something. For all the wonder and joy of traveling in time, to say nothing of the comfort that comes from knowing your home time will always be there, sometimes the weight of the centuries is just too much. Any time an adventure is set on the character's home world, or somewhere the character states reminds them of their home world, every action is at a minus one, unless their life is threatened. Woof. That's neat. That's though. pretty cool. Is that a, yeah. is that a minus one or a minus two? It's, it's a minus one to every, every action unless your life is threatened. No, it's a negative. It gives you one character point. It's a minor bad, so it gives you one. Yeah, because he's on the minor bad. Amnesia? Animal lover. Okay, That's, I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Argumentative. You're compelled to stop looking at me. Yourself in danger, kind of thing. By the book. By the program. Caregiver. Clumsy. How's, how is caregiver a negative? It, it, because you're compelled to help other people, even in situations where you should be running or. Uh, okay, I like to do that one. Or, or, or you have. A dependent caregiver, caregiver. It's like the animal lover in mm-hmm. with people, but with people, yeah. Oh no, the bad guy shot that random citizen. We better run. No, I gotta take care of this. Yeah, I gotta go get him. I gotta, I gotta go help him. <laughs> Except you, you don't really swear. Yeah. Gosh dang it! Oh mittens. Oh, mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever said that? Uh, I've said it. <laughs> Care- caregiver, mine or bad. Whenever the character encounters vulnerable people needing help, they must put effort into helping them, unless they can make an awareness plus resolve roll at minus two. So you can resist it, but you're at a fit deficiency to try to do so. Make you resolve plus what? Awareness plus resolve minus two. And that's mine or bad, so that gives you one character. Code, oh, sorry, clumsy. That's one. Code of conduct. Cowardly. <laughs> Cyber hysteria. That's always a fun one. Dark secret. Secret, secret. I've got a secret. It's tempting. Dependency. Distinctive. What's distinctive? Hmm. Distinctive essentially means that, like, you, they can pick you out. Something very striking or obvious about your character. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean alien. It just means that there's something striking about you to the point where people are going to remember you if you pass by and recognize you if they see you again. Got that scar over It's your Gavin's eyes. Nose. That's a minor bad, so that's one character point it gives you. If the character's trying to blend in or go unnoticed in a crowd, they take a minus two to the Also, if they're seen doing something, or if another character or NPC is asked to describe them or remember them, right? That person receives a plus two to try to remember or recognize you. You're easier to spot and easier to remember, essentially. Which is good for marketing. Now, several, like several Time Lords, have distinctive because they're you know fucking wearing weird shit. <laughs> That's why you just change your body. It's the gold robes and the huge headdress. Well, yeah, I'm Gallifrey. I was thinking about the, the scarves. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, about I was thinking about this, the, 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 the six doctor's awful coat. That too. <laughs> and the celery. Mm. Now, in the audio dramas, technically, he wears a nice blue one, which oh. is it's very nice. 
that they should have gone with the show. But they, yeah. they fixed it in the audio yeah. dramas, is what I heard. Yes, they, they fixed it. Distrustful. How much is that one? That's a minor, so that'll give you one character point. Okay, so that one. I feel Dis- like I've got a feel for what that would be. But Distrustful. I don't know how mechanically work. Distrustful, minor bad. You suffer a negative two penalty to all social roles with any new people you meet. Oh, oh, oh. Makes sense. The penalty is only removed when the person has proved true to their word. Yeah, that sounds good. So that's a minor, I'll give you a one. Doppelganger. Eccentric. Failed mind wipe. Wasn't that a positive? Yes. Yes. It could be both. Apparently. It could be both. It could be both. You don't remember, like the good horrifying circumstances, the or it it went wrong and like, you know, forgetful. I guess one that one for free. You went in for the mind wipe for your own reasons, and more mm. was forcibly done on you. Fragments. Fresh meat. I'm just curious what that is. Fresh meat. Also, is it a one or a two? Fresh meat minor. is a minor. Let me look up fresh meat for you. Ooh, ah, so yeah. so huh? Something about the character smells good to meat-eating predators. Oh. Dinosaurs and other alien predators can't help but want to eat them. You smell tasty. All right, I'm taking fresh meat. It's minor bad, so it's del- you get, get one point. That sounds fun. Firstly, you're just a delicacy on some mm-hmm. level. Any attempts to use subterfuge to hide from predators suffer a negative two penalty if they can smell you. Literal predators. Secondly, given any choice... Any hungry monster is going to snack on your character instead of anyone else nearby. You're always target number one. That's fair. Impaired. Impaired senses. Impulsive. Indolent. Insatiable curiosity. Jingoist. Mm -hmm. Know your place. Some of these are from the Paternoster stuff, so it's Victorian era times. Mm-hmm. Um, last of my kind. Literally by the book. <laughs> Logical, loud, lower class, marginalized, middle class, obligation, obsession, outcast, outsider. Owes favor. You owe someone a favor. Passionate love. What's that one? She didn't know. Okay. Just want to know that one? Okay. Let me, uh, passionate love. Just sneak that one in there. Where is passionate love? I, gen- I genuinely want to know what this one is because I've mm-hmm. never seen this one. Passionate love. Your, it's a major bad trait, so I can give you two character points. Your love for someone is so consuming, it is hard to see past it. Yeah. When you are separated from them, you can think of little else but finding them again. You're constantly in fear for their safety. When you are not with the object of your affection, you suffer minus two on any action except those that will help reunite you. <laughs> you must also pass a resolve plus ingenuity check, difficulty 15, to do anything that will not bring them back to you. <laughs> so this is like playing Amy. No, it's worse than that. Yeah, I was gonna say it's worse than playing Amy or Rory. This is like it's a, it's a for a character from a fourth Doctor serial. Okay. But like, like specifically, they invented this trait to describe this character, right? Who was it? Yikes! I don't know. Okay, we'll get there. We're almost okay. done with third Doctor. Uh, past trauma. All right, what's past drama? Half the table gets it for free. 
Yeah, we all get Jack of all trades and pass trauma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds about right. Past trauma. The characters suffered deep emotional trauma at some point in their past or their formative years and have been unable to face it. Uh, the trauma might take several forms, but any number of things might remind the character of a past they try very hard to forget. The player and game master should discuss the nature of the trauma and what might trigger it. It might be one event or manifest in a series of phobias, such as a fear of clowns Shut and up. crowds. It literally says this Quit in the Quit describing text. me! <laughs> when the character finds themselves confronted by their past, they suffer minus two to all rolls, mm -hmm. if you took it at minor, and minus four if you took it at major. Wow. The major trait also has more triggers. Good. Does it continue to, gen to, to list me in the major one, too? Jesus, don't. No, th that's just a one paragraph okay, for past good. trauma. Uh, phobia. You can say that you're deathly afraid of some particular thing. Uh, prejudice. For the, if you want to play a racist, I guess, just for fun. It could be against technology. Like, you know. uh, that's Luddite. <laughs> well, I mean, it's technically prejudice. Yeah, right? Kind of. Yeah. Um, procrastinator. Depends on the reason, I guess. Relentless. So you're saying you can be prejudiced against relentless. things other than... Relentless. Mm -hmm. Arguments. Philosophies. Maybe no time for a lot of like relentless you know. character does not stop ever until they catch their quarry hmm. that was um, that's a good trait that is mis, mis, mis uh, categorized. categorized yes but if you want to know what it is I can tell you it's minor Plus two to any roll when chasing after someone or something in a pursuit situation. Uh, repulsive. Request stop. Ruthless. Selfish. Sesquipedalian. What about ruthless? Ruthless. That's six top. Minus two to mercy rolls. <laughs> Roll of mercy. Ruthless. As a minor bad trait, any attempt to convince the character to do something that wasn't in their plan or isn't immediately in their interests is at minus one. At a major bad trait, it's at minus two. I take that as a major. Ruthless. Major bad. Minus two to convince your character to do something that wasn't in their plan or wasn't immediately in their interests. So that's for everyone. That's really for, to remind everyone else. Man. Somehow that sounds like a... Hmm? Like a positive trait in a way. In some senses. Silver Spoon. Slow reflexes. It's the opposite of quick reflexes. You go last in the phase that you're in. Technically inept. The best kind of an up there is. Temporal amnesia. Thank you. Temporal amnesia. Temporal castaway. Unadventurous. Just Wilson. What's temporal castaway? Temporal castaway. It sounds like you just got like launched out of your time. You, you, do you get a free Wilson? Wilson. Uh, not a, not unless the time has the ability to make volleyballs. That's fair. The character is from another time and place, but is now stuck in a single unfamiliar time and place. They have a bit of trouble adapting to their new home. Whenever the character attempts to use technology that is unfamiliar to their home time and place, they take a minus two penalty on the roll. So that's kind of the opposite of time travel. Yeah. This trait cannot be taken with the time traveler trait. Yep. If the latter would grant familiarity to the tech level, the character's stuck in. So you can still have familiarity... Yes. With another tech level, but not the one that you're, you're probably stuck. in. Mm -hmm. yeah. They cannot counteract each other. Uh, let's see. Okay. Unattractive. Nice. Uncommunicative. Hmm. Uncreative. Unlucky. Upper class. Wanted. And weakness. Which is like, 
usually it's referred to like aliens or robots, like the Cybermen from like the Fifth Doctor's time. It's like just fucking throw some gold at them. They hate that, <laughs> you know. For reasons. <laughs> for reasons. Uh, I'm guessing unlucky is a minus one or a plus one. It's a minor, so it'd give you one. I'll take that because when am I actually gonna roll two sixes? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> is that you can't take that because it'll happen a lot. Yeah, that would be bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you take that, is it just like you have to take the next roll or every the time? next roll? Yeah. Okay. So you could potentially get two. You sixes could roll it back. Yeah, you back. could get two sixes again, and you're like, okay, thank God everything worked out. And thankfully, that's not affecting like your attribute level or your skill mm-hmm. level or whatever. It's just surely. Yeah, random it's just the dice. Yeah. It's not if it's twelve or above. It's. Well, two, six, one. Yeah, I'm not sure if you found enslaved or not. It's the only one left to tick through. And then it's just picking up psychic stuff. So what all do we have in terms of like character concept design? I'm a smooth talker. I like it. That's it. Nice. Talk first. Hopefully talk last. Apparently I'm a thug. Okay. <laughs> I'm a I'm a, gonna be a time lady, so I've got I mean, at the moment, I don't know. Let let me finish doing my character with Jason because I don't know what's mm. gonna change, but I have a high mm. ingenuity technology and science and knowledge at the moment. Nice. Any ideas, Lance? Well, I'll be leaving soon, so... Yeah. Ah, fair, fair. Well, what type of character have you been doing? I was thinking, like, a, like a, a unit person. Oh, nice. That so, makes so, sense. So, so, some, some knowledge, some science, some medicine, some... Somebody who actually has a in... Yeah, I didn't take anything in fighting marksmen. Nope. <laughs> I did. And I would have done well, like not much fighting. Mm. You were literally the only person capable of fighting, I think. But apparently we shouldn't yes. be doing that anyway, so... It, you sh- it shouldn't solve the problem, but it can be a step on the way to solving the problem. It's like a last resort type thing. Yes. Like, if someone's shooting a gun at you, then of course you're going to move and try and tackle them to get them to stop shooting at you. Mm-hmm. Like you, you may need to apply violence, but that won't solve the bigger problem. Like yeah. You aren't going to take on an army of Daleks by fighting them. <laughs> you have to either outsmart them, make a deal, or something. Or die. Yeah, or die. I mean, that's if you try to fight an army of Daleks, yeah. you're just going to die. It, it's yeah, the one so thing that... Not if you can cover up their eye stock. <laughs> <laughs> or, prior to uh, Remembrance of the Daleks, if you Stairs. just, like... Get on stairs, stairs above them. Uh-huh. They're, just, they, they're stuck down there. <laughs> then they got jetpacks or something? Yeah, then, then they, they could, like, packs. hover. And yeah. then at that point, you're like, well, fuck. It's, it's like Claptrap. Mm-hmm. He did have his gliding wheel. <laughs> okay, so... Stairs. Exactly. Those are all the general good traits, bad traits, and some special traits that I've listed out that you can take as... Sounds like, like I'm in particular circumstances, usually if you're alien, psychic, or robot, cyborg, blah blah. blah. I, so just to try to get this out of the way quickly, I, were you able to find what enslaved was? If oh, not, right. yes. I'm just going to go with like adversary. Keep that simple. It doesn't actually specify what it does. What what book it's from is the thing. No, it's from D and D wiki. And I literally did make blueberry scones. If anyone wants, I could smell ah, the I blueberry. Mean, that it sounds okay. great. Do you want one? Yes. Yes, yes please. please. <laughs> I need to get okay. Supper, so. I apparently just need to all of it. I've had so much food this weekend, and I'm still hungry. <laughs> I feel like that's another one. We had four okay. burgers, half a pound of bacon, <laughs> for lunch, <laughs> and then for dinner, I had four eggs and a bunch of cheese, 
And then I've had two cookies and a bunch of coffee. <laughs> Four eggs. <laughs> that's too much. That's like almost a full like work week worth of food I would normally <laughs> But you had a lot of lunch. <laughs> well, if uh, you know, enslaved is like not a good yeah. choice for you. So, okay. It is major that bad. Like, it means like, like I have to obey uh, my master's commands. Just we'll just go heavy day, with a major yeah, adversary. Yeah, like lunch yeah. Yeah. Then a major <laughs> adversary. <laughs> Is, yeah. is Cybermen an option? Yeah. So this is how this works, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's minor or major depending on the power and frequency, the power of the adversary and the frequency of their appearance. A fairly powerful villain that makes an appearance every campaign, such as the Daleks, would count as a major adversary. So if you wanted to do Cybermen, that would be a major adversary. Sounds good to me. Weeping agents. They really should have been minor, though. One episode, perfect. Second episode started to less effective. Mm -hmm. more yeah, started yeah. to crack. The more they crumble. Yeah. Yep, agreed. Third episode. Oh, why? These motherfuckers again? <laughs> yeah. I was terrified of them after one episode. Mm -hmm. they they should have just stopped and blink and just not. Yeah. 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 I actually had a. Ceramic angel I got from something that we just won, and I put it up on a shelf, and Katie hit it, or maybe threw it away because it looked like Weeping Angel. Sure. And she only watched the one Weeping Angel episode and skipped the other two. That's that's good. She <laughs> keeps that fear. Best. I just want it to be: you finish the episode, you look at it, and then just smash cut to you like throwing it on the ground <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh no, I got it after she had watched that episode. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> okay. So remember, if you have character points left over that you haven't spent on traits, you can convert them into skill points. I'm curious about Psychic Stun. Psychic Stun. Wait. So, points from traits can only be skill points. That's a Sunday this year, isn't it? Can be used on other traits, but do go to just skill points. Yeah, you can't turn... Um, trait points to attribute points. Trait points to character points, which would be... Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, fifth of November. I mean, they're already Monday. character points, so you could spend yes. the leftover okay. on the attributes. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So, traits either take away from or give you character points. Okay. Okay. So you could use points gained from traits to buy attributes. You're not technically supposed, supposed to, to, but you can, okay. according to the rules. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> You're encouraged to, like, set your attributes and then move on. Mm -hmm. Right. No, it makes sense. But you could, if you had extra uh, character points, to put them into attributes. But by that time, you should have, like, maybe two or three left. You know what I mean? And then just, like, round some off. Does that make sense? Mm hmm So can I, like, say three of them just to put into my attributes? Just, like, scatter them around? Yeah, I mean, you could. Mm -hmm. Because I've got a lot of points left over. I got nine. Nine character nice. points? Yeah. Even after buying the good traits that you wanted? Yeah, because I only bought one good trait. I would put... Do you want more good traits? I'd put the majority of those in skills, mm -hmm. and then sprinkle some in your attributes. Just to make sure that they're not above... Six. Six. Unless yeah. you're an alien! Uh, and, even, and even, like... Ratings of five. I become, wasn't going to put anything above five. Well, yeah, yeah. So in that case, then you're good. Yeah, I mean that's that doesn't stretch the realm of possibility, right? Makes sense. But I was like going to put one in awareness, maybe one in assault, and one in strength. Sure. Yeah. If you want to do that, that's fine. Put those out a bit more. So for you, the psychic stun business. Psychic stun. If that doesn't go, then I'm probably just going to go with telekinesis, which I would assume is pretty straightforward. Move the thing, do the thing. <laughs> the baby. Psychic stun, major good. Mm -hmm. Allows a psychic character to blast an opponent with psychic force, overwhelming them into unconsciousness. Neat. Single target. Both must make a double resolve roll. So resolve plus nice. resolve. Mm -hmm. Taking it. <laughs> If the psychic character only just succeeds, like zero to three above, right? Yep. Um, the target remains conscious but cannot act. Nice. They can attempt to stun the target again next round. 
a good success renders unconscious. And a fantastic success renders them unconscious and reduces the target's resolve by two when they awaken. Well. Should the attack fail, the victim's mind is proved too strong and no further attempt can be tried. Oh, nice. And a disastrous failure failure instead knocks you out. <laughs> but I that's like a it. good like non lethal damage. Mm-hmm. Just to be like, like go to sleep. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Is it is it going to be super difficult? I no, just be, okay. it's just that like you've been jotting things down, and the Time Lord template I have is like just take these. That's fine. I can erase and do different well, things. Let me let me let me pick it up because I just joined this group and with designers of the game in it. Cool. <laughs> and they're like, nice. you want to just do like a like a blank Time Lord? Here's a here's a template for that. Okay, great. Because you can construct your own, and there's a whole. There's a book that allows you, like, the Time Traveler's Companion, that's just like, here's more information about creating Time Lords, if you want to play them. If you want, I can just erase this. I've got an extra sheet as well. It's not a big deal. Um, Or I could just modify my sheet, you know. When I did it, I tried to replicate what I thought a Time Lord would be anyway, within the the constraints. So So here's a Time Lord. Um, Attributes. Awareness, three. Coordination, three. Ingenuity, six. Mm. Presence, three. Resolve, four. Strength, three. So average in most respects, except for stronger resolve and their ingenuity is off the charts. That is a much stronger resolve than the doctor has. I don't think that's true. She's like a squirrel. Or at least Capaldi is. But he never gives up. That's that's the point. So it's yeah, this weird. It's this weird backup. Maybe his maybe his awareness is too high. He's constantly seeing things that interest him. Skills. Mm-hmm. Athletics two. Convince one. He has the caregiver. Fighting. I feel like almost every one. doctor has the caregiver. Okay. It's like he just Knowledge. can't help himself. Two. Oh, I had that. I figure okay. all of them would have marksman one. They're all the same person. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. Medicine, zero. Science, three. Subterfuge, two. Survival, one. Keep in mind you're a Time Lord, not the Doctor. Sure, that's true. Technology, four. Hmm. Transport, two. Okay. Here are the traits you have. Insatiable curiosity. Appropriate. Insatiable curiosity. I think it's technically a, I think it's technically a bad trait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I, think it's it's yeah, I remember it sounds negative. Yep, it's a minor bad. Uh, the character simply has to know what's going on, why something is happening, or how it works. <laughs> yep. It may put their life at risk, but it doesn't make them suicidal. Show up at a location. Oh, this doesn't look good. Let's figure out what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> like everybody in a horror movie ever. If the yep. character tries to fight the urge to press that button or open that door, but it's candy the man. player can make an ingenuity plus resolve roll at a minus two. Okay. Code of conduct. Thou shall not kill. At a minor. The character should try to do good at most times and are unable to harm another being unless it is absolutely necessary and for the greater good. The greater good. Feel the turn of the universe. That's an interesting one. Feel the turn of the universe. Set special good trait. That's for normally for only Time Lord characters, really. Mm-hmm. It gives you an innate ability to sense when something is amiss or unnatural and what needs to be done to set the universe right. This can be anything from sensing that a person has unnatural indestructibility, knowing that something is disturbing nature, or sense that something's tampering with time. They may not know exactly what it is, but they'll know something isn't right. (coughs) The character will sense something is wrong with an awareness plus ingenuity 
with a plus two bonus. The more successful they are, the clearer the problem will appear, as well as the potential solution. <coughs> you are technically adept. adept. <laughs> technically adept. You've got an innate connection to technology. Um, plus two to any technology roll to fix a broken or faulty device and to use complex gadgets or equipment. It also applies to any gadget creating through the jiggery pokery rules. Awesome. Nice. Let's see. Time Lord. Did you guess? It's my bad. Time Lord's a special good trait. Two hearts. It gives you all of the abilities of a Time Lord. You can regenerate, um, that's it. <laughs> you get it. You also get a gadget at no extra cost, hmm. like psychic paper or a sonic screwdriver, for instance. Hmm. The game master will decide if they have access to a TARDIS or not. Oh, Time lords must have a couple of bad traits. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Those were already given to you, so. Well, and I, I took a couple, too. I don't know what you want me to keep and what you want me to give back. I mean, you can take all the bad traits you like. You know what I mean? Like, it's not... Because I took all too much in Caregiver. But that's, that sounds fine to me. That, that okay. fits a Time Lord character, sure. But all my good ones go back that I picked out. Yes. Because okay. these are being those are being replaced by, by these. these. That's fine. To keep the balance of the character. Sure. You know um, character. Well, I really liked resourceful pockets. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you could certainly still get that. It's just the, like, the points that you were given. Yeah. That's, you could probably get it with your extra negative well, traits. Well, the other, yeah, the other two one, two I take, I could. Yeah, the extra bad traits could give you resourceful pockets, for instance. It's so. true. Or I could pump up one of my... So if you want to use the rest of the, your character points to pump up skills, it'd be one for one, right? Yeah. One to one. What's that? If I wanted to use the two character points I'd gotten back from the two minor ones I took, I would. it would be one to one, right? For skill points? Skill points? Yeah. 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 Well, and basically on everything. And everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's one to one. What if I don't want the one in Marksman? Can I change it to a zero and put it in something else? Yes. Great. As long as you're not... As long as you're just reassigning the numbers and not, you know, adding or subtracting more than what you are budgeted, right? Sure. So you're also a Time Lord Engineer. Okay. That's another trait. Major good. Um, obsessed with honing their technical skills, these inveterate tinkerers typically find themselves working to remain Gallifrey's, maintain Gallifrey's vast infrastructure, or working in a TARDIS repair bay after they graduate from the Academy. This trait doubles the effect of the technically adept trait. So that's plus four instead of plus two for your tech skill. Which makes sense. And then... You've got Vortex as a trait. Vortex adds plus two to any role that involves piloting a time travel or yes. vortex manipulating device. That's what I wanted. Yes. To pilot what? Any, any, any time, time travel. travel or vortex manipulating device. So that includes a TARDIS, that includes uh, like time travel rings that the Gallifreyans sometimes invent, that includes the vortex manipulators that time agents wear in their wrists, or... Even Dalek ships that have tried to reverse engineer the TARDIS's time vortex shit and doesn't really work. <laughs> it's true. So now there's a special version of that. If you're an alien, you can you can pay eight character points, and you can just step through time. Nice. Oh, just like, whoop. <laughs> man. Usually reserved for villains or NPCs. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Oh no, they're getting away. Hold on, I got this. 
<laughs> you have eight Where are story you going points. Somewhere? I have eight story points. No, no. Yes, sometime because Fantastic. because <laughs> some of them have been spent. Normally, you start with twelve story points. Oh, okay. Some I of them have been eight. spent in the, in the process of making you a time lock. Right. That's okay. Your tech level, which you can jot down in the hexagon at the bottom of the stuff. Oh, I see right? that. Is a ten. Whoa. Remember, Earth is is a five, so that's current still Earth. Twenty first century Earth is five. So you're way ahead. But I'm sure she's got a couple of uh, time traveler tricks. Bless you. And the tech adds the plus four, right? So. You have a TARDIS. I do have a TARDIS? Yes. Yes! You have a TARDIS. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep it simple. We'll give you a Type 40. Okay. The old junker that the doctor uses. Not the same one, but a similar model. Okay. Right. Um, Does the chameleon circuit actually work? I don't know. That's a, that's something to determine. Do you want me to roll? <laughs> <laughs> no, just decide. Uh, you have a toolkit. Cool. Gives you a plus two bonus for all rolls involving repairing machines. And you also have a staser. A staser? Yeah, it's a it's a pistol. It's like a laser pistol. It's for the 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 Chancellery Guard on Gallifrey Carry. Uh, it has both lethal and non lethal settings. Yeah, I totally didn't take anything in March then, so it's gonna be like a paperweight. Okay. Then that then that just does stun damage. Okay. Like no matter what result you're you're getting, it's like S slash S slash S, so it just does stun damage. Right. And that's it. Cool. Did you say extra limbs was a minor for alien? Additional limbs yeah. for an alien. I love this conversation already. Is a minor good. Yes. yes. I'm um, curious what it does, but I mostly just want it for the looks. <laughs> Where is the extra one? Sticking out of his forehead. Oh, probably do the classic, like, an extra set of arms from, like, the bottom of your ribs. Not like a prehensile tail? It's tempting. Did you say good luck, Yes. Okay. Additional limbs. Ah, all the strange, strange creatures. Is it just going to be like T Rex forms? Just no, like full <laughs> usable arms. Like, what, what's the point of getting mini arms? You, you get like guns, and they, they just they just add them. They were ambush predators. No. <laughs> Additional well, limbs. I, I do like the idea of like a T Rex holding a gun or something. Mm-hmm. It's just the tiniest of arms. It, it, instead of like having a shoulder holster, they're just like. <laughs> so, uh, it's a minor good trait for aliens. Okay. Right? It costs one point for every it additional like pair of limbs. Oh, pair. Okay, pair. good yes. to hear that. Yeah. Nice. If the alien has additional legs, their speed is increased by plus two. You basically have a plus two when you're doing anything related to like the physical legs. speed. right? Mm-hmm. If the limbs are arms, mm-hmm. the first additional action in any round receives no penalty because they can effectively do two things at nice. once. Normally you can do one action, right? I'm going to talk, I'm going to run, mm-hmm. I'm going to do something. If you want to do multiple actions, it's minus two each time. So it's a it's a recurring penalty, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, done and done. Though somehow the tiny arms were beneficial to survival, though they wouldn't have happened. Yeah. That I could mean, be just a vestigial be... thing. Yeah. yeah. They just shrank because they were unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the energy was needed elsewhere. That's why we only have one head. Hmm? Part of the reason they think that I mean, no two-headed thing ever happened is it's a lot easier, it's a lot more efficient to just have one thing making the decisions. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Anybody else need traits or anything like that? Yep. Everybody spend all their character points? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Skill points? Mm-hmm. Everybody good? Yep. Okay. Now, what you need to do is die. Is die. So, yeah, so oh, sto- story points, die. unless it's been modified by some special thing. You start at 12, right? You have 12 of them. Um, and you're supposed to use them liberally, obviously. Um, make sure that you've got a name written down and kind of a rough description, like, you know, female, Silurian, you know, 70 years of age, like, 
wears a smock. Like, I don't. I don't know. Like, you know, get just a just a rough like. This is the character in a nutshell kind of thing. Then once you do that, you've got your traits listed and everything like that, and then you've got stuff. That is technically like the what she was. Oh, you need to figure out what gadget you've got. It's not the turtles. Remember, you get that free gadget. I know. I'm. I'm trying to decide. It's a tough decision. Could I have the twelfth Doctor's Sonic sunglasses? You can have Sonic sunglasses, yes, but I don't have stats for that because they haven't put the twelfth Doctor's source book out yet. <laughs> So, all characters should have the basics according to what they would carry around when they go out. According to their, again, tech level or... Oh, that's another thing. If you haven't set a tech level for yourself, do it. Done. That makes sense to your character. If you come from 21st century Earth, that's five. If you come from Victorian times, that's four, etc., etc. Like, just ask me, like, when you want to be from, and I'll give you, like, a TL from that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um... And then, based on that, like anything you'd carry with you, like in, a, in terms of a 21st century character, they might have a phone, uh, a purse or a wallet, maybe some cash, a notebook, a mirror or something, but that's about it, right? You're not going to go out with, like, climbing gear, night vision goggles, torches, guns, like any weird or bizarre equipment you need to suit the environment might already be somewhere in the TARDIS, in the wardrobe, or in another of its myriad rooms. And if you're planning on starting the game with any unusual item of equipment, we have to talk, talk it over and accept it. I'm a psychic alien, so like robes. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, uh, just snacks. you have you have base basic <laughs> clothing. Mm -hmm. You have stuff that you, as a member of your species, would like carry around if you needed to go, you know, somewhere out somewhere, like down the street, you know, to, to the out. restaurant or out to, to the corner store. store. Yeah, I mean, it just makes sense. Sonic. Travel stuff. I want a Sonic Sonic screwdriver. Yeah, just Sonic screwdriver. <laughs> okay. Just hanging out there as your, for a as while. your kite, just 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 mm -hmm. sitting there waiting. Photonic <laughs> energy takes a while. There'll be a flare sometime. <laughs> okay. Confused. Okay. Go into my bones. How are the scones, by the way? Great. They look great. Mm -hmm. awesome. <coughs> Sounds like it was a good baking day. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't well, I had to use this. frozen blueberries this time because the, they wanted four bucks for six ounces of fresh strawberries. Yeah, nope. Or I could get 12 ounces of frozen strawberry or blueberries for three dollars. And I was like, mm, yeah, okay. Frozen blueberries it is. And with baking, it tends to be a lot harder to tell. Right. I just made sure to like squish out some extra. Sonic food. screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> it's a I major gadget. And... Okay. Yeah, all out. Yeah. Here are the traits that it has. Woo! So these are sub things that it does. These are gadget traits. These are things that it does. Okay. Open slash close. Okay. It has two restrictions. Wood. Cannot open deadlock seals. Hmm. And it has tricky controls. And I can I'll explain these traits in a minute. Scan is a trait that it has. Transmit is a trait that it has. And weld. Mm -hmm. It's been used to weld before. Mm -hmm. Not often, but... On rare occasion. Okay. And it has two story points. Woo! Because depending on if it's a major or minor gadget, it'll have story points with it that you can use to, like, make plot changes specific or whatever specifically with the gadget right. itself, right? Okay. Um... So for the traits, open close, the power to open locks and seal things shut again if necessary. If used with subterfuge to pick a lock, plus four bonus to the roll. Wow. Locking a door is far easier than opening it. Most locks tend to lock when they're tampered with. Um, giving the character a plus six bonus if the game master decides a roll to lock the door is necessary. So it's easier to lock than it is to open. Four down lock six. It can scan, investigate something within a range of a meter and see what's going on inside it. User's got to make an awareness roll coupled with a suitable skill, 
medicine for a biological scan, technology for device or computer. Scan will give you a plus two bonus to that. Okay. It can transmit. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. uh, ingenuity plus technology roll. And then I'll set the difficulty depending on if the signal is being intercepted or received, how distant it's being sent, whether it needs to be encrypted, blah, 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 blah. Weld is pretty straightforward. Like, it can be used to burn something, cut through thin substances, solder and weld small items together. That's pretty straightforward, right? Um, restriction. The sonic screwdriver cannot open deadlock seals. And it doesn't work on wood. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Are there any traits I haven't explained? No. Scan, transmit, weld, open, close, and the two restrictions. Oh, tricky controls. No tricky controls. Um, only one person can use it, basically. Or only somebody who knows how sonic screwdrivers work. Nice. So, if you handed that to somebody, it would be a... Like a bias. It would be like a significant penalty because they're like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Because it's a time, it's like a TL10. Yeah. And if you tried to use it with your technology skill at TL5, that's minus 10. Minus 10 to try plus to, whatever. Yeah, to try to use it. Right. So. Okay. It's going to be a bit rough. Uh, 